While I reckon I've cleaned probably hundreds of wheels on camera, don't think I've ever done a complete wheel clean walkthrough explaining exactly what I do, when and why. And that realisation plus the fact I had a few new interesting products to put to the test made me think it was probably about time I did. So without blowing my own foam trumpet, I'd like to think that after cleaning probably thousands of wheels over the years, both on camera and off, I now have the process down to a relatively fine art. And while I can't promise to transform you into a wheel cleaning wizard in just one video, can impart a few sudsy pearls of wisdom to hopefully help hone your approach. And while I'll primarily be focusing on step-by-step -step procedure here, we'll be getting to grips with a few recently released items along the way to try and keep things relatively fresh. So stick around to see me methodically fondle some fake Ferrari wheels as well as a few others with a trio of quirky new tools and products. Now before getting hands on you'll want to try and remove as much loose dirt as you can in contactless fashion from both the wheels and their surrounding arches. A dry generous pump spray application of a non-caustic traffic film remover, citrus degreaser or all purpose cleaner will help to soften up and break down dirt from more heavily soiled or neglected surfaces while a standard pre-rinse will knock back the bulk of any superficial dirt from more well kept ones. And while a pressure washer isn't absolutely essential, using one will help to activate any pre-cleaning products on the surface and efficiently cut through dirt in a way that the spray from say a hose pipe can't. I hit the arches first, then while they're soaking the tyres and face of the wheel, then while they're soaking the barrels, which along with the arches tend to be the grubbiest bits. And while there's certainly some cars out there that might not be able to withstand an up close and personal pressure rinse, in my experience the vast majority can, so unless you're working with something really old, really ropey or really clean to begin with, don't be afraid to properly put the pressurised stream of water to work for you. With a thorough pre-clean and or pre-rinse carried out, assuming you're looking to perform a relatively deep clean, you'll then want to apply a dedicated wheel cleaning product like the new Camatori one I'd be giving a go here. Much like the application of the pre-cleaner, I first spray the face of the wheels over ensuring all areas are generously treated which the uniquely designed handle and trigger of this dye gloss bottle allows you to easily do. Then move on to coating the barrels over in the same manner which gives the faces a moment or two to soak before being thoroughly agitated over. I'll generally start the contact clean at the centre of the wheel, working the lug nuts over with a suitably sized brush which might differ from wheel to wheel as not everyone's tarnished nuts are the same. Then once they're done work the centre cap and surrounding parts over with a different brush, usually a super soft one. And if I'm working with a dedicated wheel cleaning product over say a bodywork shampoo which I'll use for regular maintenance cleaning of well kept wheels will ensure I periodically rinse it out in a nearby bucket of fresh water. I'll then work my way out from the centre of the wheel, first tending to the flat or front facing parts of the spokes and outer rim, before moving on to thoroughly tickling the slightly more recessed parts of them over, paying particular attention to any details where brake dust can accumulate like the cutouts on these particular wheels. And although I'm generally a dab hand at brushing familiar wheel faces over, I have to position myself at awkward angles when filming to try and keep the line of sight clear for you so might not come across quite as dexterous as I would when tending to them head on off camera as I'd recommend. So once all parts of the wheel face have been adequately agitated over I'll then go ahead and apply some cleaner to the tyres which I don't generally do up front as I find it tends to dry quite quickly and either leave streaks or just go to waste. 
And with this stuff being formulated for safe use on tyres as well as wheels, there was no additional product rummaging necessary. While they're soaking, which they do ideally need some time to do even if they've been pre-cleaned, I'll then move on to sorting the rear parts of the wheel, starting with the backsides of the spokes, which are probably one of the most overlooked parts of a car. Although you can't see these surfaces, it's still important to access them with a small mitt or an appropriate bendy brush, as corrosion can set in and work its way around to the front of the spoke by which time it's too late, so try to remember to at least give them a bit of a once over. Now that the barrels have had ample time to soak, which generally being the dirtiest parts they do need to, I'll then go ahead and brush them over with an appropriate item, whether that be a nice soft wool or microfiber brush for wheels that are regularly cleaned or not very dirty to begin with, or a synthetic bristled one for dirty, more neglected ones that might need a bit more bite. Now, you can apply a bit of your chosen product to the brush first if you'd like, or just dampen it through and use what you've already applied. And it's worth mentioning that this Kamatori cleaner, which can be applied in both foam and standard spray form, while not being an active product, is still capable of dissolving not just brake dust, but also light tar spots, which wheels can often be peppered with, which again saves having to reach for another separate chemical. And depending on how dirty or clean the wheel you're working with is, you'll want to rinse the brush out at least once per wheel to keep things relatively fresh and ensure you're not drawing potentially abrasive dirt over the surface any more than you have to. So with all parts of the wheels adequately tended to, I'll finish up with a deep clean of the tyre walls. And because I had a set of Soft 99's die gloss scrub pads to hand, made sense to put them and their 70,000 short fibres to use here. Now, while I understand that going to the trouble of deep cleaning tyres might seem a bit excessive to the casual observer, the aim isn't really to make them look nice, as they often don't follow in a clean, but to instead strip them back of ingrained grime and stale previously applied products to ensure proper application and adherence of a new one. And so long as you don't let it dry on the surface, you can generally use any kind of wheel or general purpose cleaning product to tackle tyres. One that's been specifically formulated for safe use on them is always going to be your best bet. These quirky scrubbers, which work surprisingly well, come with a little plastic guard that wraps around your hand to prevent catching your fingers on the ground when tending to the lower parts of the tyres. But being the seasoned knuckle dragger I am, and with the bottom of low profile tyres like these being a bit too tight for something like this, was happy to scrub mine away in godless fashion here. At this stage, you can either go ahead and rinse things off to remove the product residue and the dirt it's been battling with from the wheel's various nooks and crannies before moving on. Or if you think your arches need a bit more than a simple pre-clean and pressure rinse, give them a good physical agitation instead. Now, yes, scrubbing arches out at this stage can lead to your freshly cleaned wheels being superficially recontaminated with dirt, but you'll be rinsing everything off afterwards, so as long as you're thorough, that shouldn't really matter. But what does is keeping your wheel bucket and your brushes free from heavy, abrasive arch cack, which is why unless you're performing a full wheels off arch clean, I advise scrubbing them out after cleaning all of the wheels rather than before. After rinsing the wheels off and before moving on to drying and dressing them, you'll obviously want to go on to wash, rinse and dry the rest of the car as it'd be a bit weird having clean rims and a cruddy body. And while doing this, we'll lightly expose the wheels to a further smattering of pre-cleaner, snow foam and shampoo. That's par for the course, but again, so long as you ensure nothing dries in that time and that you give them a final quick spray with the pressure washer or hose pipe when rinsing the body afterwards, shouldn't need to worry.
So when it comes to drying wheels after cleaning them, using a blow dryer is probably the safest, most effective and least laborious approach as machines like this twin turbine brule serve to effortlessly eliminate rinse water from areas like nuts, calipers and potentially hard to reach barrels in contactless fashion, as well as quickly drying tyres in preparation for dressing. But if you don't have a faithful blow jobber tucked away in the shed or just like to get hands on with your wheels then a few absorbent towels reserved for use on them and their surrounding parts will do just fine so long as you follow pretty much the same routine for contact drying as you did for the contact cleaning. Now, while tyre dressing is very much a personal preference thing, thoroughly replenished rubber does help to frame a freshly cleaned wheel. And with plenty of alternative satin finished products now on the market, like this Black Devil Liquid Tyre Wax, assuming you have a few minutes after washing and drying, there's no excuse not to in my mind. The foam applicator pads this pigmented product comes with, which are intended to keep the application of it relatively neat and tidy, match the profile of my Yoko's perfectly, so spend some time working them over the surface to get a good feel for the stuff. However, once the pad is sufficiently primed, it shouldn't really take more than a few simple swipes to achieve a nice uniform finish. While I generally recommend buffing over freshly dressed tyres to not back any excess and even the finish out a bit, not being a traditional dressing this tyre wax doesn't technically need buffing back as with enough time it dries on the surface, but because I'd applied a fair bit of it to get the shots I thought I'd need, went ahead and wiped two of the tyres over with an old towel after it had a good chance to soak in, as well as the rim of the wheels to remove any cack handed excess and leave a nice sling free finish that subtly complemented the freshly cleaned wheels rather than flashily outshine them. So to quickly conclude before leaving you with a few slick after shots then, I'd recommend dirty and or neglected wheels be treated to a dry application of a relatively potent pre-cleaning product before being pressure rinsed off, while well kept wheels that aren't that dirty to begin with can just be pre-rinsed alone. If required, a dedicated wheel cleaning product should then be applied to the wheel face and barrel before being gently agitated over with a few appropriate brushes, working methodically from centre front to recessed rear. The tyre walls can then be thoroughly scrubbed back with some appropriate tools and products until they stop releasing grime. Then, if they need it, the arches should be treated to a scrub to prevent your brushes and buckets from becoming overly contaminated up front prior to everything being thoroughly rinsed off to remove all traces of cleaning product residue and freshly dislodged dirt. Once the rest of the car has been washed, rinsed and dried, your wheels can then also be dried, whether that be with a blow dryer or a few simple microfiber towels. Then once everything is dry, including the tyres, they can be dressed with a suitable product to help enhance the look of freshly cleaned wheels, finishing up with a buff back of any excess. And in terms of routine methodology, that's pretty much it. No need to massively overcomplicate things, but at the same time, still think it makes sense to have a bit of a system in place to help ensure you achieve decent results while making the best use of the tools, products and time you have to hand. Thankfully, all of the new Soft 99 die gloss tools and products brought about decent results and felt like they'd had some genuine thought put into their intended application. And while despite not having been touched for five whole weeks, my wheels weren't that dirty to begin with. That's basically because I regularly employ the methodology outlined here to prevent them getting that way, so any criticism is ultimately a compliment. 
Now I'll link a few related uploads of mine covering things like super safe wheel cleaning, brake caliper cleaning and even wheel brush care which might be of interest below. But that's pretty much it for this one so uh, cheers as always for tuning in and I'll see you again soon with a rainy wash, single stage polish and ceramic coat of a freshly restored old Carrera.